All right, guys, well, this is going to be a little bit different of a video. I'm going to show you how I go through and test tires to see where they're leaking. So I have a Carlisle Lynx tire. It's on a beige wheel, usually on a club car or a Yamaha. White is typically used on EasyGo. You can see we have a decent tread pattern. It doesn't have any weird wear spots. It's not cupping. It's not nasty and just crappy. It's a nice tire with some decent tread left. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through the process here and show you what I do to test these things. All right, so we're gonna do this process in the garage. Normally I would do this outside, but because it's about 9,000 degrees outside and the humidity level of 950,000%, it's really damn hot. So we're gonna do it in the garage where it's cooler. Uh, what I first do is I take some super clean and I will spray down the whole outside of the wheel and tire the tire face, the tread face, whatever you want to call it, and the side walls. Keep in mind, this is with no air pressure. This tire is absolutely empty. See, look at all that black crap rolling out of there. This stuff takes everything off the tire. I'll do both sides. And the reason for this is to clean the wheel, mainly. And to clean the tire, get any debris out of the tire. But this stuff is like an engine degreaser. It's a degreaser, it's a cleaner. You can use it in your laundry. All kinds of neat stuff you can do with super clean. I usually let it sit for maybe a minute or two. I don't like to leave this stuff sit, stay on anything too long because it will kind of make it nasty. And you can see already with just that little bit. Actually, I'm gonna change this over to Jet. And we'll do some light pressure. Biodegradable, it's non harmful to the environment. Like I said it's it's good stuff, the super clean. I mean you can see the difference already that it's made. It's gotten all that grease and grime out of there that came off the axle of the previous golf cart. This will be the cleanest spot in the garage by the time I'm done. And this process also allows us to find any potential imperfections in the the tread face and the sidewalls. You want to get all of the any mud that may be caked on the tire off. That's the main reason for this. Main reason for this process is to basically just get the tire clean before we do anything else. And I'll put it on shower here and if I'm outside, typically I could use the pressure washer to make short work of this. But like I said, it's so hot out there, I really don't want to be out in the sun. Not complaining that it's hot, it's just too hot for me to work outside. So I got to do this holding the camera. But it also cleans all the cobwebs off and all that junk. All right, so now that we see the tires all nice and clean, this one has a valve stem that's typically used with a tubeless system, so there's no tube in here. Uh, a lot of times I'll find leaks around the base of the valve stem where it starts to crack and you basically when you move it this way when you go like this it'll p tear and when it tears that's how we know we just have to replace the valve stem which is fairly simple you've seen me do that in other videos I'll take notes on what I see on the tire if I see any nails or screws sticking out which I don't on this one I gave this tire a, a quick once over just to see if there was any nails or anything and any visible damage that I could see but then we'll take it over to the tire machine. Put it on the tire machine here. We're not looking to break the bead or anything just yet. We just want to inflate it. And I'll typically bump these up to about 50 PS, or I'm sorry, 40 PSI. And the reason I go to 40 is that way I have the air compressor turn on. Okay, so we're just a hair over 40. All right, now once we get it filled up, I bring it back over to where I washed it or, you know, outside. And then I take a pump sprayer, a one gallon pump sprayer. Or what is this, two gallons, one gallon? I don't even know. One gallon. Awesome little pump sprays. I love these things. I have a whole bunch of them. One has super clean, which is that one. This one has just Dawn dish detergent and water. No specific measurements, just to squirt it in. And then I'll take this stuff because it foams up really nice. And I'll spray it on one side of the tire and I'll watch for bubbles. And we'll Come over here to the other side of the tire. I'll spray the sidewall. And then I'll also spray the valve stem area. 
And what I like to do is remove the cap and spray it as well because sometimes the core will leak. And this one doesn't seem to be leaking anywhere on the sidewall. If you're not sure, just spray it again. I also like to watch the bead and it'll be almost immediately apparent once you see a, a leak that's showing up with the soap. And I use this as opposed to the super clean because it's, you know, it's, it just washes off easier and it shows bubbles a lot better. So, so far we have no, no leaks on this and you'll know it right away. And then pick it up and spin it. And that's why I go to 40 PSI because it'll push any air out of any potential leak. Anywhere it could potentially leak, you'll see it almost immediately. And don't be afraid to use a bunch. And it seems like we have a good tire because I don't see any leaks. Stare at it for a minute. Because sometimes if you get a, a leak that is so small and minute that you're not spotting it right away, it takes a couple of minutes to see it. Some people will dunk the tire in a vat of water and soap. To see if we see any bubbles, and I don't. So you'll see it immediately. And I have another tire that has a sidewall leak, so I'll show you on that one to just to demonstrate the what you'll be looking for. Okay, so now I'm seeing evidence of leaking. I'm going to give you a second to see if you can tell me where you think it is. All right, now this is a very, very slow leak that is sometimes going to be very difficult to find, and it's right here. Now what I'll do is I will take my hose on shower, I'll rinse it off again. This stuff rinses off the tire much nicer than the super clean does, you know, for quick stuff like this. And then you can see, hopefully you can see right here, there's a few bubbles popping out of that little hole. See right here, that is a sidewall leak, and it, it is so tiny too but I'll just emphasize it here with a little bit of soap. So you can see as the soap is running down, it's constantly creating a stream of bubbles. So that tells me there's a sidewall leak in this tire and it is so slow that it's not really detectable by any other methods, or at least it's not detectable by just spraying a really light dab of soap on. So you have to really clean the tire good in order to find this type of stuff. So what I'll do for this is I will probably put a tube in this tire just because once the sidewall starts to crack right there and typically that happens when they go flat and they sit in that spot for a while you'll see the tire start to bubble out that tire there it's, it's because it's a good tire it'll get a tube I'll just rinse it all off and we'll make sure all of the all the crap is off rinse off the, the side and when i get a sidewall leak i mean there is a way to patch them I've had good success patching sidewall leaks, but because that one is so small, I really don't want to use a patch on this tire. I typically like to save my tire patching for much larger leaks than that, where they're basically gushing out of the sidewall, or too large for a plug. See, I wouldn't plug that because of where it is. So what I'll do is I'll let it dry, and then I'll mark it with a crayon, tire crayon, and just so I have reference for that, that there's a leak there. And that is a very common leak, just so you know. I mean, that's very common for a tire to leak right there, especially when they go flat. What happens is they crack. See, I don't know. This one actually looks like it's in really good shape, but there's a slit there, so there's a cut. So it's like they ran into a, maybe they hit a rock or something, which is possible. Overall, I mean, it's a really good tire, and the wheel is in decent shape as well. So this will be tubed, and it'll be a good used tire for sale. All right, so I have another tire here I just soaked up with Super Clean.
Okay, this tire is a different brand. This is a Kenda hole-in-one. I don't worry too much about the backside. My main concern is the tire. All right, so this one here has an obvious leak. It's in the face of the tire because I can feel the air coming off of it. There it is right there. So we know that that's at least one leak. I couldn't even get this thing up to 40. It wouldn't hold it. So I want to basically just check now for other tire face leaks. So and that's our most obvious one. All right, so because where that tire is leaking, right here, we can plug this tire. I'll show you how I plug a tire. First things first, I'll take my tire clean out tool. I'll drive it in, clean out the hole, leave it in. Take my tire sealant and the tire plug. Some holes you have to take a couple plugs. And then I'll thread my tire plug into my plugging tool. Okay, just like that. Take some sealant here, some rubber. Looks like it's a little dry. I'm gonna be needing some new stuff. That's fine. It'll coagulate in the hole. I'll remove cleaner and then I'll insert my tool and then I'll leave it. Leave it sit. I don't know if I got a positive connection on that. It didn't feel very engaging. But I don't see any further bubbles coming out. Oh. Do I feel air? I think we have another one. Okay, so we have another hole right here. Oh, this is a multiple hole. Oh, well, we'll do the same thing on this one. You can see how that, tight, that bubble's blown right up. This one has multiple punctures. And I like to try to tube them first. If tubing them works, then that's great. Have to get some air in this tire. Okay, and then we'll push it in. And then release. Okay. So that's two plugs. Now I'm going to take it over to the tire machine again and inflate it. Alright, so on this tire I'm actually hearing more leaks. And it's... This one here is leaking still it's not taking so sometimes if you grab the plug and pull it out a little bit to move the glue around sometimes you get lucky other times you have to the hole is big enough where you have to put a double plug in which is what I'm going to do here I'll remove that plug out of the tire because it may hold after the glue sets up, but we're just gonna we'll pull it through a second one here. That's a big hole. I'll gently slide it in. Whoop. And sometimes you end up going too far. I did there. But I think it actually stuck. That'd be amazing if it did. See, I don't know if that's gonna. That might actually work. Because I think I just went below the tread line here. Yeah, I did. That's all I did. I went right below the tread. So we don't even have to trim that one. That one will be fine just like it is. And then our first one over here is holding as well. 
So we basically have now a repaired tire. Let's see if we have any sidewall leaks. No bead leaks either. We're good there. Yeah, it looks like we might be might be in good shape. And sometimes that's what it takes, guys. When you want to plug these things, you got to do it a couple of times. I don't see any sidewall leaks. See, sometimes bubbles like this will just move down. Oop. Do we have a bead leak right here? So you have to always be watching because sometimes what looks like a leak is not because the bubbles kind of collect and they start moving around and building up and we're gonna double check the sidewall on this side here. Make sure the bead's not leaking. Bead leaks are pretty simple to fix unless the bead is damaged. Bead sealant usually fixes that. I try not to use bead sealant unless I absolutely have to. And then we have this one here is our first one. And then here's our second one. See, and there's no leak in there. It's See, now what I'll do is I'll rinse this tire off now, now that I've plugged the tire and it's got two plugs in it. I'll rinse this tire off real good. I'll pump it up to a predetermined PSI, say 30 PSI, and I'll leave it sit for 24 hours. If it's still at 30 PSI or within one PSI of that, then we'll consider this one a, a success and this one will be good for good to go for sale. I'll go set the pressure and then we'll leave it set. Good old trusty wand gauge here. And this says 27. So I really have no idea how accurate that gauge is on the tire machine, which I really don't trust it all that much because it's just a cheap Chinese gauge. I'll put the valve cap on it. I might even check it in a couple of hours. If it's dropping in a couple of hours, then I know that that patch didn't, or those plugs didn't hold and it'll probably get a tube. But as long as it holds air and it's good, it'll be good to go. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video here and showing you how I handle used tires. I have a stack of them that I got to go through, so I'm going to get to that. So, all right, guys, until next time, don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Don't forget to check out the links in the video's description to products that I use every single day to bring you these videos and run my business. Check out all the links to my website, Patreon page, Facebook, and all the like. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and until next time, we will see you in the next video.